welcome back to the channel guys. <laughs> it's mighty chilly out here. You guys are up on top of my truck. You can see that tractor there, that fine fella. He's going to help us use all of those wood chips to heat this large greenhouse. So we have uh, eight to nine, maybe 10 tons of wood chips over there. He's gonna help us dump them over on our Jean Payne heater. We have all the bare bones out and ready to go. So we're gonna go check this out. We've got a lot of work we've been doing on the greenhouse and we're trying to update everybody through the whole process of all this free heating. We got a nice sunny day out here, but it is mighty cold, it's chilly. We've got maybe above freezing here. We've got this trench we've been digging from the garage heading into the greenhouse. We're gonna be running some electricity in there and we're gonna get a few lights, I think. We're gonna experiment with some lights. So if anybody has any lights they wanna recommend, recommend some waterproof lights for us. Looks like he's already grabbing a load here. We're gonna make our way through. We got this water hose running and these expandable hoses are where it's at. These things are pretty darn cool until they get a hole in them, I guess. But potatoes are working well in this little cold frame. Always looking good in here. Lots and lots of life coming through this bed that we had just planted. You can see all of the sprouts coming up through there. Everything just looking wonderful in here. Pond development. Nice little quick breeze through the greenhouse. Everything looking really well under these low tunnels here. And lots of work done on this end of the greenhouse. As you can see here, we've got our tank set. We got all our well water in here and a little bit of rain water. And we've got all of our lines ran, everything's running. We've got our fan running just to uh, see if it was working. It's blowing good air. We've got our new water lines, old water lines. Let's go outside here. We're sitting 82 in the greenhouse and 30 something outside, about 35 maybe at the most. We've got all of our transfer. We've got both of our pecs. You can see our copper. We've got our wall. I'm going to use water and inoculate this pile. Those fresh wood chips have a lot of nitrogen. We're gonna get this set up and we're gonna get going here. So we had a little issue with the width. I had to open up the ring just a little bit. So that was to hold all the compost in. So we got our first dump on there and I pulled everything up so it's not buried. We're gonna stagger all this through the layers so it gets even heat. Hopefully everyone can see the basic gist of this. I'm having to pull these through the layers as they're being dumped. It's a little bit of handwork, but it beats the crap out of doing this by the wheelbarrow. So I'll do this a couple times until it gets to where I want it. And I'm staggering all of those layers up. And once I hit that point, it can just be filled in and then it's done. I don't have to get in there and work anymore. Another main factor is watering this. You gotta have a ton of water to get these active and we use really fresh wood chips which helps us out because they're already pretty moist. So I'd like to show for perspective this here, how we did two separate water systems. This pole in the middle had the copper on it and then we've got our PEX tubing. So we got this gap between the two water systems and we're not gonna inhibit the burn or negate the compost reacting or being active. So we don't wanna have all this piled up and bunched up. So we kept pulling it through the layers to give a bunch of good aeration and stuff. And I think we're gonna have good success with this. We've still got a lot to dump there and here comes the next load. Let's give a little perspective on this pile right now. This mound is looking pretty good so far and we've got maybe twice or more material to put and add to it. So that's why I went wider with the ring this year. The ring is maybe 16 to 18, possibly 20 foot at one point, kind of like an oval right now because I had to break it open for the tractor to get in. So I will actually measure it and get a good measurement of the pile and see how much we're actually working with because we like to find the BTUs and figure out how much we're actually using for air and for water. And we like to figure out all the data from the experiment. So this is a long process. It's going to be a lengthy little video here. I want to get everything done right and get all of this set up for all of the free heat that we're going to harvest off of this throughout the winter here. I can never stress enough when composting how important water is. Water is the most vital aspect of having active compost. This stuff 
as I'm watering the coal. This stuff has to be completely soaked and saturated for wood chips. Wood chips take a long time to absorb all of that water. These wood chips really soak up a ton as I'm watering them in. It never runs off to the ground really. It's usually just getting soaked up. Even on fresh wood chips, it seems to still soak in for the most part. And we have a lot of nitrogen in those fresh chips creating a fast and hot burn. So with any added nitrogen and added water, we should have a huge pile that will burn for a long time. When your wood chips are fresh, they have a 300 to 400 carbon to nitrogen, 300 to one, 400 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio, as opposed to used in old wood chips like on a playground or some back to Eden wood chips that have been sitting for years. Those have five to 600 parts carbon to one part nitrogen as they lost all that nitrogen to decay and basically composted it in themselves. I'm just gonna let that hose sit up there as the pile's getting pretty darn big now. I wanna talk about these transfer lines down here. So you can see our transfer lines here and we left ourselves a whole lot more room. You can see over here we have our piece of plywood there where we cut out and we have our lines running through. So back over to where they run into the greenhouse, we left ourselves a ton more room. So with that three and a half feet, we're going to have to really insulate these tubes and we're gonna to have to get some nice insulated duct work or something like that to wrap around this in order to insulate it. Here comes the next load. So just trying to get little fun facts out here while well, we're in between loads. I just stuck the hose up, watering the other side of the pile, just trying to keep it completely moist and keep that water just raining down, a heavy, heavy watering. So these transfer lines, I wanna give a perspective of how much we actually have exposed because last winter we had this bad boy bundled up with a whole bunch of leaves, leaf bags, and solid ridge insulation, rigid insulation and stuff. So we did a bunch of DIY stuff and I wanna do an even better DIY and I want this to transfer as best as it possibly can. And I wanna note that we kept it up off the ground. You can see this gap down here, put the board down so everything is up off the ground. We'll be able to work all this all the way into the greenhouse. You can see all our new lines, everything running in. So once we get everything set up outside here, I'll be able to worry about all of the internal transfer stuff and everything outside the pile. Something I had to do last year was kind of spread this out with just a snow shovel or anything you can use really. I just kind of spread this out as it's getting piled on the center so it just keeps amassing the whole center and just insulating that core. 75 off that. He had to fix a chain or something back there so I got a second to talk. We've got this continually watering down on it. I ended up moving my fence back around so we've got a nice circle and he can continue dumping into there. And then we've got this fence that we can take and start here and wrap all the way back around and double up the fencing. And that is if I feel that I need the double fencing. Most of this just stayed put last winter without the double layer, but we had leaf bags on the outside. I'm gonna try and get away without using leaf bags, or we might go grab some still, I'm not sure. It's just a lot of work harvesting 150, 200 leaf bags from town. There is a whole lot that goes into the planning of this, but once you get everything set up, it is not bad at all. Once you get all the systems, once you work with it and experiment, it's not too bad. You figure out what you're doing here and you got a guy with a tractor that'll help you out. So we're about halfway through the process and this pile is about as big as it was last year already. So we're sitting pretty darn good. See that compost steaming away over there, those wood chips, as he's digging it out. I'm gonna go take the temps on that pile real quick. I'm gonna keep the water going here. Steaming off of there. Sitting the cool 101 in certain spots. 102. Try to focus there. So there is a lot of free energy tied up in all of these wood chips. And it's a lot of work, yes, but is it worth it? 
yes, it certainly is. Even if you can't use a tractor and build all these free wood chips into a pile, you can use a bunch of straw bales or go around and grab all your leaf bags from your local town. We did that last winter where we harvested leaf bags from our local town here and we got about 100 to 150 of them between our two greenhouses for insulation. So It was pretty wild but it was a lot of work so we figured if we built a big enough pile this year we wouldn't really need to insulate it like we did. I'm gonna be out here watering this pile for like three hours just to get it soaked in, I swear. That's how long it's gonna to take to do this. I am praying for rain tomorrow so I don't have to do any more watering and then I can inoculate a whole bunch of nitrogen in here. We're gonna do some type of nitrogen dump video, I think. Uh, we're gonna do some tubes and liquid nitrogen. We're gonna run some PVC tubes where we can dump nitrogen at certain spots, intervals, and most of this has a lot of nitrogen anyway, but we're gonna dump some just to kickstart this and get it going. It's already darn hot, but the size of the pile, I want to throw some extra nitrogen so we have a good burn for a long time, like at least 18 months. I jumped out into the greenhouse just to warm up. It is nice in here. It's hitting a cool 81 degrees. And then it's like 34 outside. It's just freezing out here with a bunch of wind and crap. I've got my water, just water in the top of this. We ended up having about nine tons of compost with all in all. So you can see the size of this pile. I'll jump up on the ladder here. That bad boy is just massive. So we got about nine tons of wood chips there. And we're going to compost those, try and burn them the best we can, and get as much heat as we possibly can with all of our free systems. And as you can see, we have some wood chips left out there. I didn't need any more. We filled up everything I needed to, and I peaked it up like I wanted. It looks pretty darn good. This is exactly the way I wanted it to look. Once we get it watered in, I'm going to be able to cap it, and then I'm going to experiment with using some type of methane capture system on the top of it this winter. Kind of like uh, your landfills do. They just burn all the methane off over there. And that guy's really getting in there. So this is exactly what we needed for a size to burn, to heat this greenhouse, and to put about 50,000 BTUs. The nine ton mark was about the 50,000 BTUs that we figured out, I believe. And that's right where we wanted to be. So we've got everything we need right here. We've got all the systems set up inside this pile. And then we've got all the transfer work to do here. And then we've got to set up the lines inside and start the process of using solar power to move the water and move the air so just jumping in the greenhouse real quick we do have this solar fan running through our compost so it might actually start to heat up I can feel warm air we've got this little thermometer we're gonna let this sit in here for a while I can see it going up already I can physically feel warm air coming out of this tube already it's pretty darn cool let you guys get a listen you feel that warm air? <laughs> so we're sitting a cool 34 degrees outside and this thing is blowing air from inside the greenhouse, yes. So it's blowing about 70 degree air or so in to the greenhouse right now. So I was just using that little contraption just to get a temperature in there. I need to put a thermometer on the end of that thing. So really all that's left to do once that pile is built up is to get all these systems cleaned up, clean my batteries, clean all the wiring up, and get the air and water flowing properly. The air seems to be working well. I can feel a lot of warm air coming through that. It's like a freaking space heater right away. It feels so good in here on a cold, windy day. You can see my pile getting blown around a little bit there. It's like really, really windy out. So that'll be the next update video is getting all of the systems for this running and operating on solar power. Right now, we're just doing all of the grunt work, getting all of the water and everything set up and all the tractor work. So that is pretty much it. We're waiting for this to heat up again now that we took it apart and reassembled it. So we have a lot, a lot of heat that is potentially coming and we're going to be able to use all of that heat in the greenhouse. We just gotta protect our transfer lines. So look out for a insulation video and a DIY solar setup video where we get all the systems running. So there's a lot coming down the pipe here. And I'd really like to thank everybody for watching all of these videos, checking this out. And if anybody has any questions on anything we did today, 
definitely drop in the comments below. This was not the most entertaining because it was a lot of just hard labor work and getting a lot of dirty stuff done, getting things set up. So as always, I'd like to thank you guys again and I've got my work cut out for me. I got a ton of work to do here, getting everything set up for winter time.